Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days, but today's second video, day 10, will take us to the 16th of March, midway through month, and uh, we'll be able to extend that beyond that with a set of GFS and ECM ensembles, because they run to around a couple of weeks, and we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us to the beginning of April now. I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just say the first video is our 6 cm upload. Uh, so please check out that video. Please like, share, subscribe on this. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. No Sunny Roundup this week. They're hoping, I'm hoping to get the Sunny Roundup back uh, for April. So just watch your space uh, on that. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, no Sunny Roundup this week, but hopefully it'll be back very, very soon. Uh, right then, so let's start off your 10 to 14 day. Just to say, if you're wondering about the verification for the winter forecast, we are going to do that, and it'll be appearing in the next week or so. Have to eat a little bit of humble pie, I think. Uh, right, okay, let's start off with the video then. And uh, we're going to begin with uh, CT, so section temperature is currently standing at 6.2, that's 1.7 degrees above average. That's provisional to yesterday, to the 5th of March. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. Birmingham today said red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. It's something up below average at the moment. We're going to see the upper air temperature gradually lifting up over the uh, next few days. It's going to become quite mild as we get into the middle last stages of next week. We're probably falling back a little bit again as we move into the middle and second half of uh, March. And very close to average, really. Um, you know, as we go into the third week of the month. So, taste wise, going to be quite a bit of dry weather over the next few days, and it gradually gets more unsettled, especially around the middle part of March. Actually, looking quite wet. Uh, by the time we get through to that point. Uh, temperature anomaly is on me 6th to the 14th of March, a little bit milder than average, actually, for the UK and for Ireland. Scandinavia also stands out a bit, a bit mild now, so it's really in the far north, northwest of Europe, but it's pretty mild. Otherwise, quite a cold scene, especially so in eastern areas, eastern, southeastern parts of Europe, again, looking really cold around Balkans, down to Greece, more snow <laughs> for Greece and Turkey, I'm sure. Um, Ukraine could be very cold as well, I think, over the next week, so that's not going to be good news for, for the people there. Um, you know, it looks cold in the south and the east, mildest in the north and in the northwest. Precipitation anomalies from the 6th to 14th of March can be drier than average in eastern areas. Uh, wet and average out to west is indicative of like high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west type pattern. Latest wind from Matt from Earth, Nolschool.net shows that we're uh, under an area of high pressure today and we're pulling in quite a chilly east to north east wind, especially so for more southern and eastern areas. Right, let's start going through some chart data. And just say that later on in the video, we will, uh, yeah, we will have a look uh, at some long-range models for summer 2022. So that's going to be quite interesting in about five minutes or so. Uh, but chart data from UK Met Euro, uh, first of all. So we've got, uh, this is for the 9th of March, midnight 9th of March. We've got high pressure to east, low pressure to west. This low pressure will bring wet and windy weather into northern and western areas, along with the south to southwesterly wind and then we keep those south southwesterly winds going into the weekend of the uh 12 13 parts so instead of cold easterlies as you look like we get a couple of days ago actually we've got mild southerly to southwesterlies and low pressure in the west will bring lots of heavy rain in off the atlantic so turning wet in the west but also mild with those southerly southwesterlies icon is looking like this again uh, we've got high pressure in east, low pressure west on Wednesday, bringing up a southerly, southwesterly wind. Generally quite mild through the middle and uh, second half of the week, but below pressure in the Atlantic will bring rain in from the west. Heading into uh, next weekend, same pretty mild, low pressure continue to drive in off the Atlantic. That keeps it wet and windy as well, and that gets us to the 13th of March. As far as we go, with have Icon with low pressure our west, high pressure yeast, winds coming up from the south, so quite mild, but also wet, uh, particularly so for more western areas. The GFS uh, midnight run, again, looking very similar for Wednesday, low pressure in the Atlantic, high pressure over Europe, we're pulling up those southerly southwest. The cold air is high pressure, by the way, is going into the east of Europe, so the cold air is coming out of, sort of Russia and then pushing down uh, through the east and the southeastern part of Europe on the eastern side of the ridge. Meanwhile, Western Europe, of course, continues with those mild south southwesters as we've had throughout the entire winter, really, just uh, with, with the exception around Christmas for Northern Europe, anyway. 
Uh, let's set about that better. Uh, right, uh, moving through the second half of next week, it carries on looking wet and windy. Um, with low pressure in the Atlantic, high pressure over central and eastern Europe, combining to pull up a southerly southwesterly wind, so it will be very mild, but it will also be wet. And that carries on into weekend. This area of low pressure potentially bringing a lot of wet weather in off the Atlantic next weekend. Heading up towards day 10, uh, we keep low pressure on Greenland, Iceland, driving in off the Atlantic with further spells of rain at times. Heading up to the second half of the month, again, generally quite mild, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Up comes those southwest winds, they're going to be mild, but will bring outbreaks of rain and potentially some quite strong winds as well. So looking unsettled really all the way up to 22nd of March with the GFS midnight run. Uh, GFS 6Z, again, is very similar with those southerly southwesters at the end of the week, so it'll be mild, but it will also be unsettled with rain in the west, particularly with this area of low pressure. It could become a named storm. It does look quite vigorous. It could bring some severe gales into the west and the northwest. Uh, next weekend, and then up to day 10, um, we keep winding from the southwest, maybe a little bit drier, southern and east areas with this ridge. But it uh, looks wet and windy still out to the north and the west. Perhaps a slightly stronger build of high pressure then into the second half of March. Very different to what the six, uh, what midnight run was showing though. So I'm not sure how reliable 6Z is here. Um, but it does build up some high pressure a few days through the third week of March. Before we finish up looking quite unsettled once again. Uh, GM again is uh, much of a much new southwesterly southerly winds and plenty of rain to come. Over the next uh, week to 10 days, as low pressure comes in off the Atlantic, it'll be particularly wet in northern and western areas, but at least it will be mild. Uh, the ECM again, <coughs> excuse me, with that area of low pressure out to the west in the middle, second half of the week, bring further spells of rain in off the Atlantic. Uh, and then finish up perhaps with a little bit more high pressure around days 9 and 10 uh, to our south and east. Um, so we might get some higher pressure around the middle part of March. But overall, it's, everything's still driving it off the Atlantic. There's no fundamental change to the pattern, despite the stratospheric warming that we haven't looked at today, but have been looking at in recent videos. So there's no change, you know, to the fundamental setup, which is still very Atlantic-driven, as it has been throughout the entire winter and now on, of course, into... Uh, into mid geological spring. Okay, so let's have a look at the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Initially, quite a lot of dry weather under the ridge of high pressure over the next couple of days. I mean, it turns more unsettled for around the middle of the week onwards. Some spells of rain begin to move in off the Atlantic. Initially, relatively light and patchy, but they start to get heavier as we get to the end of the week and into next weekend. So, really quite wet weather. Maybe a little bit of sleet and snow mixed in as well. Have to see about that. Um, yeah, it's going to be quite cold just to our east. So if we was to turn the wind a little bit more southeasterly, so this, this precipitation could turn wintry uh, next weekend. But overall, it's mainly rain, quite a bit of it, until we get to around days 9 and 10, and then it begins to turn drier. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles Day 4, Day 10, which gets us to the 16th of March. 19 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure to our south southeast, low pressure to our west northwest. Some winds are coming in from a mild southwesterly direction by that point. High pressure should bring quite a bit of dry weather to the south. That does include the control and the operation run. 17 with high pressure again sitting to the east. Low pressure is out to the west. That's an even drier scenario and it is mild as well, bringing in winds from a southerly direction. And then 15 still very unsettled and Atlantic dream with deep low pressure in the Atlantic and in come those west to south westerly uh, winds. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. This is going to get us to the 21st of March. Uh, 29 members of the ECM Ensembles with a Scandinavian high and low pressure in the Atlantic, that will bring the wind in from a south direction, so mainly dry uh, and probably quite spring-like. And then 22 with low pressure in the Atlantic, and that looks a little bit wet and windy. So a um, bit of a split there as we get towards uh, two weeks out, but uh, no sign of anything overly cold, I have to say. CFSV2 is looking like this in a moment. We're going to look at some summer data. So hang in there for a couple of couple more minutes. And then we'll look at some summer data for you. Um, CFSV2 week one. 500 millibar high only from the 6th to the 12th of March. That's high pressure over Scandinavia. And that brings the wind in from a little bit of an easterly type direction. It will be quite chilly initially. And it's going to get milder, of course. Week two is going to be the 13th to the 19th of March. And low pressure then 
comes in off the Atlantic, that turns us milder, wetter and uh, windier. Actually quite unsaid, we could bring a lot of rain into the west. Week 3 starts to build up some higher pressure. Uh, 20th, 26th March, higher pressure building to both our south and east. Low pressures away to the northwest. Jet stream beginning to rise a little bit further northwards as well. That turns things drier and milder to the south and the east. And then week four, we have 27th of March, the 2nd of April, high pressure to the south, but also raising the heights a little bit towards Iceland and to the north. That might be the first size of a little bit of blocking from the uh, stratospheric developments that are currently going on. Um, difficult to say, but as it is, we're probably still quite mild up to that point, bringing a win for a southwesterly direction. Right, let's start bringing you some uh, spring and summer data then. So let's have a look at CFS V2, carry on with CFS. So this is the 700 middle bar high tomley uh, for April. Looking quite anti-cyclonic, high pressure just to our west northwest should be mainly dry. Could be a bit on the cool side, but if we bring the wind in from the northwesterly direction. Uh, May looks like that, so higher pressure in the Atlantic and going north. Could be some lower pressure down here. That might be quite wet and maybe uh, even volatile. Uh, probably a bit thundery for southern air. Areas. Uh, June, 700 millibar high dummy has high pressure just to our uh, east, probably a trough in the Atlantic. Again, that could be quite warm, bring up wind from the south, but could also be a little bit thundery. Uh, we, um, then you're through to July, they said week five, <laughs> go through to July, month five. Uh, so we're a long way out, of course, not worth worrying about really, but high pressure going north then, probably lower pressure through here. But there is a bit of a sign of the Zor's high starting to ridge in from the southwest. That could be turning totally more unsettled. And then August, very traditional, what we expect. High pressure blocks within the northern latitudes. Let me stick up a drop of blow over the top of UK and Ireland. That will be a cool and wet August, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't verify, but it would be typical. This is the overall 700 millibar height anomaly uh, for uh, July from the CFS with high pressure to the north, uh, a trough through here. So probably quite an unsettled summer, starting off warm and then getting cooler. Uh, ECM uh, looks like this. This is the uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly from the ECM for April, May, June. High pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. Well, there's not much else going on, but you would expect there to be like an Atlantic type flow. There's a trough in over Scandinavia, so probably quite cool and uh, mixed, if anything. Um, Tri monthly period for uh, May, June, July looks like that. So low pressure then appearing around Iceland. High pressure again in the Atlantic. Looks rather Atlantic driven there through the early summer. Probably quite unsettled and a little bit mixed. June, uh, July, uh, July, August is summer itself. Looks like that. Not much to go with. There's low pressure to the north. High pressure towards Newfoundland. Just looks rather Atlantic. There's no sign of a particularly good summer here, I have to say, from the ECM. It looks pretty mixed. Uh, July, August, September. The ECM looks like that. Again, low pressure around Greenland and Iceland. And again, just rather mixed. Um, there's no sign of, of any particular ridge from the Azores. Uh, and with low pressure around Iceland and Greenland. Could be unsettled. It would depend whether the Azores high ridges in more strongly than that show. But I think it hints at a mixed summer. Uh, to be honest. And then we've got the ECM. It's from last month. Um, got UK Met, I should say, from last month. Again, mean sea pressure for March, April, May with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. That's basically a pattern that we've had uh, all winter going on through uh, the spring. Let's see if we can find the next time it appears. There it is, uh, which is April, May, June. That high pressure goes away to the south and we begin to move lower pressure in over the northwest of Europe. So just turning cooler and more unsettled, probably. And then uh, we go through to May, June, July. And it looks pretty poor, really, this, from the UK met with uh, with low pressure over northwest Europe. There's hints of blocking around Greenland. Uh, very poor summer, I think, if that comes off. Certainly early summer. Anyway, it doesn't quite get us to um, June, July, August, the full summer period yet. Uh, but yeah, you know, very mixed signals from uh, a lot of these models for the summer. Um, so we'll wait and see, you know, uh, it's very early days, it's not worth worrying about the summer, really. But at this stage, there's no sign of any particularly strong build from the Azores of pressure. And it uh, just looks a little bit mixed, I have to say. Uh, so after a very mild winter, maybe we're going to get a poor risk summer. We'll have to wait and see. 30 days, uh, hopefully, these longer range models will improve. We will have the UK Met going through the full summer period in a few days' time. So we'll have another look when it updates uh, for March.
Right, if you enjoyed the video, but I haven't got the gift up today. I forgot to get the gift up. Never mind. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the smash like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Webbies. Thank you so much, everybody. Dear Matt, we're done with today's video, so we'll be back tomorrow with a 6 a.m. upload and also a 10 to 14 day as well. So keep checking back for that. But for this uh, video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.